Howdy folks and welcome to Brewing TV. I'm your host, Jake Keeler. I'm your other host, Michael Dawson. We're standing inside Liftbridge Brewing Company's brewery, located in Stillwater, Minnesota, which is about 20 minutes outside the Twin Cities. Drinking local. Mm -hmm. It's something more possible now than it has been in a really long time. Breweries like Liftbridge are a big part of that. Startup breweries, serving small communities. We've talked about this before. Jake, what's special about Liftbridge? I think what's special about Liftbridge is it really has that homebrew mentality. It was started by a bunch of home brewers. They still have that home brewing spirit. They're focused on their local market and they've grown slowly and uh, very calculated steps to get where they are today. In this episode, we're gonna visit with a couple of the guys behind the beer, Dan and Matt from Liftbridge. Talk about what makes things tick in still water. Grab a pint, stick around. All for brew. Brew for all. We're playing public enemy on brew day. Gotta respect that. I don't believe the hype. I do not. I refuse to believe the hype. taken some time and lots of effort, but Liftbridge Brewing Company has finally found a home of its own, this warehouse facility, located in the small town of Stillwater, Minnesota. Stillwater is a pioneer town. It's a small town uh, along the St. Croix River. Um, it's dubbed the birthplace of Minnesota. We decided to um, start the brewery in Stillwater because all of the co-owners, we all live here. Um, thought it would be a great amenity for the community. We were all kind of into the history of Stillwater and knew that there were three breweries here prior to Prohibition and there were none here now and just seemed like it was something that the town could, could use. There's a Stillwater water tower and that's where the water comes from in yeah. these beers, right? Yeah, it's just a block down the road. They know where their water comes from. Do you know where your water comes from? <laughs> well, the lift bridge is kind of um, one of the icons, I guess, of Stillwater. It's kind of unique because it goes up and down um, vertically and it allows boat traffic to pass underneath it. You know, we, we thought about, well, what kind of communicates uh, the lifestyle and um, the attitude in the area, and, and, and that was something that stood out. It's been very well received. We, we have a lot of people coming and talking to us saying, we're so glad you did this, the town needed it, and um, people really uh, enjoy our beer and are supporting us. Right now, we kind of have the, the place divided into two halves. We have the warehousing on the one side, so that's for finished goods, raw materials. And then on this side is, is more of the production side. So um, brew house, we have our boiler room, grain mill, fermentation. And we built the floor large enough so that we, could, we had some room to expand there as well. This cooler we actually bought used from a, a local distributor. And as we were putting it together, we found an extra part, which happened to be um, an asset tag from the old Grain Belt Brewery in Minneapolis. Oh, wow. So I don't know how much of this came from there, but uh, some, some parts certainly did come from the Grain Belt Brewery. A little Minneapolis. Minnesota brewing tradition yeah. right here. Yeah. yeah. This is it's a two vessel brew house. We have a, a combination mash lauder and kettle whirlpool. Just said we do about 15 barrels. We have 30 barrel fermenters. So we usually double batch into fermenter. For the most part, uh, our, our beers are, we kind of, we brew what uh, we like to brew. Today we're brewing uh, Farm Girl, it's a Saison, so it's a, a pretty broad style of beer, so it's kind of our take. As comfortable as they look, the crew is still getting used to their new digs. 
Over the last three years, Liftbridge partnered with a series of breweries to contract brew their beer, always with the mission in mind to have their own space in Stillwater. I think contract brewing is a nice step. It allows you to kind of wade in a little bit. Um, and some people may say you're not serious, but you know, we, 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 we've self-funded this and gone slow. Haven't uh, taken any money out of the business, everything that you know, we've, re we've been reinvesting it. I think to some people it might be actually overwhelming to make that full leap into purchasing equipment, um, building out a brewery, um, finding cooperage and packaging. It's a tough road no matter which one you choose. Just because you do a contract brewing doesn't mean that it's all going to work out and you're going to make tons of money. I mean, that's certainly not the case. Um, and, and I think if you're in it for the right reasons, you're, you're, you're um, executing on your recipes, um, not compromising on what you want for ingredients and that kind of stuff, I don't see any, any issue with it. I had um, an email come in and um, you know, somebody was disappointed that, that the beer said Stevens Point, Wisconsin. And they said, well, I'd drink more if it was here and it should be Minnesota jobs. And, you know, I just responded, that's, that's where we're going and this is the step that we have to take. I also said, if you drink enough beer, I'll build that brewery tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just happy that we're, we're here, you know, and making good on that promise to, to have a brewery here. All right, you guys want to give me a hand? Just hold the back of that cast. One, two, three. There we go. It's fun to bring out a cask. We have a cask, a hop prop IPA here, and I'm a really big fan of casks, so um, I was happy that I was chose to come to this event and, and uh, help pour the beer. It's really cool getting out and talking to people about the beer, meeting them, um, answering questions that they may have about uh, the brewery or about the beer, or why did we get started with this. And it's really fun just chatting with people. There's so many great people and a great craft beer community here. And people want to learn more. They want to talk to the people that are, are making the beer. I noticed the new logo and kind of a new look going on. Is this yeah. going to be, are we going to see an overhaul of the, the logos and whatnot? Yeah, we, we are doing a little bit of a, a change, uh, evolution, I guess, in the logo. But you know, we didn't want to make some kind of radical change. We just wanted to, to refine it a little bit. I like it, though. I, I, like, that, I like the fact that, you know, there's a visual representation that, that speaks of the evolution of the company. Two years from now, I'm sure we'll come back and you'll have another story and <laughs> yeah. more tanks in, in the brewery. And, and I love it. You know, it's, uh, it's a unique thing that we get to witness at this day and time. Liftbridge's roots in home brewing are easy to see. Some of their techniques, like mash hopping, are inspired by the home brewer within. I did mash hopping once when way back, kind of. Well, not way, well, way back, but kind of as a home brewer and tried it once. It comes and goes. I've heard about it. And then coming here with the, uh, the home brewer influence, some say that uh, it can lead some subtle characters to, to a mash to the final beer. Um, definitely makes the brew house smell nice. I was surprised at how similar the process is. You know, doing an all grain batch on a home brew setup is on a, a 15 barrel and even a 100 barrel system, you know you still go through the same steps. In some respects, it's maybe even a little easier. You have the assistance of pumps and hard piping and, and all of that. It definitely guided our decisions. We did lots of test batches and got our recipes really kind of refined to where we wanted them to be uh, before scaling those up to 15 barrels and 100 barrels. I think all of us are kind of foodies as well, so we, we enjoy the culinary experience and pairing food and beer and some of those additives really bring different tastes out. So. It, it, all those things really definitely came from the home be brewing experience. This is definitely the result of, uh, I mean, home, home brewing taken to the next level. This is a very manual brew house. Our mash tons, so yeah, we get in there and we roll up the sleeves. It's, uh, it's a good Minnesota pastime too, so <laughs> we like to paddle. Right now, since it is, it's a combination vessel, it doesn't have a rake, so we're, we're paddling. We're also shoveling things out and shoveling the grain out at the end as well.
Well, we're sitting here, downtown Minneapolis, enjoying a couple pints of Lift Bridge. And uh, much like a good bar in a local scene, a good brewery is a nice thing to have in a local scene. It's true. Drinking local. As home brewers, we know that every beer has a story, and when you drink local, you get to be a part of that story. And Liftbridge's story continues to be told. They are bringing out some exciting new beers this fall after moving production strictly within their house. They've got an oyster stout, I think, coming out and yep. a 12% bourbon barrel aged beast that I'm particularly excited to try. Both coming out in 750 milliliter bottles. Cool. Which is really cool. So cheers to Liftbridge and cheers to supporting your local brewery. All for brew. Brew for all. Blam! Blam! Right? We want to see yeah. that. Back up and be like, Blam! Blam!